Hey y'all, this video is gonna show you the five things I wish I knew before I started my events-based business. I'm gonna get right into it. Thank y'all so much for tapping in. And I'm gonna start with number one, which is normally the number one thing on everyone's mind when starting a new business or, you know, in particular the events-based business, which is financing, right? I wish I would have known of more financing options when I was starting out my um, events-based business, because at the end of the day, what I teach my mentees, I did the cardinal sin of using my own funds, which that is a no-no if you have options. Let's just be real, if you have options. So I wish I knew of of these options that I'm going to talk to you about really quickly to alleviate the buy-in costs or my initial investment. So the first one I want to talk about is lines of credit. And there are two companies that I want to point out to you that you can access right now. And the first one is going to be Reliant Funding. And the beauty of these two particular um, companies is that they are very friendly to individuals that are new business owners. And also if your credit score, your personal credit score is not you know, up to par in the sense of like the 600 you can still get approved with their particular business model, which is amazing. So you can be able to be funded, possibly funded anywhere with credit scores, anywhere around 550, which is great. And then the next one is going to be QuickBridge. So these are both companies that tap into your personal credit history to now fund your business. So those funds, you can access those and use those to get the actual initial buy-in costs to get into your business, which is great. Another source that you can use is also business credit, right? you can access business credit through setting up your business credit profile and also leveraging your personal credit. But I'm so excited that I actually tapped into my own financing company or my own financing partnership that I have exclusive rights to extend financing to my actual mentees. So I'm able to not only help them with the information of getting them, you know, into their own space, but I can also point them in the right direction of getting financing to actually fund the business. So I'm so excited excited to offer that to my mentees and it's exclusive to them. So it's so cool. So yeah, financing is, was my number one thing I wish I would have known a lot more about when opening my own event space. So the next thing, number two, is that negotiation is a must y'all. I wish I would have known that like early on, like in the beginning that when it comes to commercial real estate, you must negotiate on your behalf. Negotiation is a must, okay? And I like to say this to you guys, everything is negotiable when it comes to commercial real estate, right? The only thing that is not negotiable is the size of the space. But in regards to the term of the lease, dollars per square foot, within reason, right? Your down payments, the amount of money you have to pay up front, cost of the renovations, the amount of months free rent you might be able to get, those are all negotiable. But if you don't say anything, the landlord is not going to say, hey, let's negotiate on your behalf. That's not going to happen. You have to come there equipped and, you know, ready to know that you are a business owner and you have skin in the game and you can put down your demands and request certain things for um, you to actually sign this lease. Guys, remember, commercial leases are not like residential leases. So you are going to be signing a lease for anywhere from two to 10 years. So just be mindful that the landlord, yes, they're the landlord, but you're the tenant. Okay. And they want you just as much as you want them, maybe even more. So just know that you have that in your back pocket, that you have some power when it comes to the, the negotiation, when it comes to the lease. Wait really quickly, guys. I wanted to, you know, shout out my, a few of my mentees that have been killing it, killing it, killing it. And, um, I wanted to point out that, you know, they have their own space and I'm so excited for them. Dorishia and Michelle in Texas. They have opened up their space. I'm so excited for them. Rasha has also, she's in the renovation process and Robin, and I'm so excited for y'all. Y'all are amazing, keep it up. And if I did not call anybody else, I'm so sorry, I didn't, don't kill me. I know y'all are gonna uh, get me in our community, but I'll get you on the next video, okay? Let's keep going. The third thing I wish I would have known when opening up my event space is that like, don't overspend in the beginning, guys. Do not overspend in the beginning. It will get you into unnecessary debt too early and you wanna be able to generate some income before you have all literally everything on your wish list. Just buy the bare necessities or whatever you need to get the space up and running, right? We need the floor to look decent. We need the walls 
walls to look decent. We need the lighting to look decent and we need tables and chairs. Do we need every type of chair? Like, do we need the Chivari gold, Chivari crystal, Chivari black? Do we need the folding plastic? Do we need rounds and rectangulars? Do we need all the centerpieces? No, we don't. No, we don't. There are spaces that can just get rented to rent the space. So whatever you can do to get into the space with the least amount of initial buy-in costs, that's what we're, we're talking about, right? We need to get in um, the least amount of renovation costs, okay? So just be mindful of that. You don't want to get yourself in debt too early because then you're just going to be having to continue to play catch up. And I don't want that for you. So if you can avoid it, please avoid it. Just get the bare necessities, floors, four walls, and a ceiling, tables and chairs, and you're good. So the fourth thing I wish I would have known and done before opening my um, event space business is create a business registry. Just like when you have a baby or a wedding, right? You have a registry that you put in things that you would want for your business to up and, you know, be up and running and to get going, right? Things that you would need. But just like I said in number three, you don't want to buy all those things because you've already forked out the cash to get into the space. So how do you get these things that you would still need to run the business without, you know, being in a lot of debt or spending out all your money? You put out a business registry. You have family and friends that want to see you win. They want to support you. So wouldn't they be okay to go ahead and buy you some things that are going to be necessary to run your business? Sure. So you create a business registry and you send it out to your friends and family and they come to your grand opening and they're there to show you support and guess what you get those items to run your business free and clear and they your family feels like they supported you um financially to see you win which is a is a win-win situation right they feel good they helped you and you got the things to run your business that's a great um tool that you can use going forward last but not least do not skimp on marketing right i wish i would have known that sooner do not skimp on marketing and start your marketing as soon as possible those are super duper important i go into detail in my mentorship speaking about marketing and um the proper tools you should use but i want you to know guys that it's essential McDonald's, Burger King, Papa John's, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, all of those businesses have been around for a decade. And what do they have in common, guys? They do not skimp on marketing. They do not play games about marketing. So are we any, are, 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 why can't we take examples from businesses that have been around for decades and are million dollar build businesses? We sure can take a page out of their book and follow along. Marketing is super duper important. You need to know what is the marketing avenue you're going to use. Make sure you set a, set a Side a marketing budget when you're doing your initial business plan or your um, projections of your expenses and do not skimp like literally do not skimp on it make sure you get to the right um individuals to run the right campaign for you so if you are interested in opening your own event space and you are looking for a mentor or coach to get you to the next level and help you out with that Make sure you text mentor to this number and uh, you can get on the phone and you know we could chat a little bit more about the the possibility of working with me all right so i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something new something helpful and if you did make sure you comment down below if there's any more videos that you would want to know in regards to the event space world or you know entrepreneurship please make sure you comment that down below so I will know. And if you have not yet done so, make sure you give my video a like. And if you have not subscribed, make sure you subscribe because I keep coming to you with fire. You know that. All right, y'all. Until next time, I hope you have a blessed day, a blessed week, a blessed month, and a blessed year. And I'll see you soon.